Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Inside Groove right here on Northwest Access TV, also streaming live tonight on Facebook Live. We've got a lot to jump into tonight. Dustin Tanner won't be here. He's busy on the campaign trail as November 6th quickly comes upon us here for Dustin. So he will hopefully be back next week, but he, he is very busy with uh, everything going on with his campaign. We wish him the best of luck there. So just me tonight, once again, here on the Inside Groove, but we've still got a lot to talk about. Of course, Talladega this weekend, a fantastic race, a couple of great races, and we'll really get, we'll get into those. Uh, Matt Benedetto, he, bet we, he told us he was going to bet on himself and leave the smaller team with Go Fast Racing. He's taking over for Casey Kane next year. Uh, at Levine Family Racing in the 95 car. That's very exciting news for him. We'll get into that. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll take a look at who might be driving the 41 car next year. As you know, there's still a couple of free agent dominoes still yet to fall as the season gets close, as we get closer and closer to the offseason. Kurt Busch and Daniel Suarez is still unsigned for next year. So we'll see. Uh, we'll take a look and see who might end up in the 41 car. Um, but, you know, and I, I do want to talk about uh, the uh, NASCAR, the, the manufacturer uh, battle in NASCAR as well and how lopsided it's really becoming uh, towards Ford. We'll get into that later on in the show. But first, we're going to talk about the truck race uh, from Saturday afternoon. This was a really, really fun event uh, as we take a look at the results from this thing. Timothy Peters went on and won this race. This is his third career win at Talladega. My Snyder uh, finished second, David Gillen third, Justin Haley fourth, and Wendell Chavis, a uh, guy who doesn't, who, who's not racing next year because he doesn't have enough funds, a huge fifth place finish for him in his uh, final season. So um, really cool to see him up in the top five uh, as he announced that he will be uh, leaving the sport after this race, actually. He won't be competing at all anymore in the truck series due to sponsorship issues and he, he wants to spend more time with his family so uh good luck to wendell and a, a great way to to go out of the truck series scene uh, and truck series points now not a lot's changed we saw ben rhodes and stuart friesen get eliminated we pretty much expected that johnny Sauter, the leader now as they go towards the round of six Brett Moffitt second. Uh, Noah Gregson, who we had on the show last week, he is 17 points behind in third place. Justin or Grant Enfinger uh, is in that final uh, cutoff spot right now as they head towards the championship four and th three races from now. And Justin Haley, four points back from that final spot as three races now. That's all they got left until that final race at Homestead. Uh, only four drivers will remain. Um, eligible for the championship three races from now as they go towards homestead so tight battle we're going to see how that goes but you know i had a i it was great to see timothy peters get a win don't get me wrong i mean the guy's been running trucks for a long time he's been a part of the sport for a very very long time uh and it's his last last ride of the season um this year in the trucks he's part-time now uh since red horse racing went went under a few years back he's part-time he, does, he doesn't get opportunities all that often. But I had a pretty big problem with how he went after that win. Um, I mean, he, he just was out of control on the last lap. And, you know, coming off a of turn two, he, he tried to, he almost crashed the, uh, the 24 of Justin Haley and then came back up and tried to force himself up the middle and hooked Noah Gragason, who is lead, leading the race. And, you know, just... All hell broke loose behind him, but that's not the way to win a race, and that's it's really frustrating to see drivers race like that on the last lap of of restrictor plate races, and then go out and say that it's a result of the racing. I mean, you, you compare this to the Daytona 500 with Austin Dillon and Eric Almarola. That was different because that Eric Almarola went for a block. Noah Gregson, if you watched the video, did not go for a block. He straight up he was just racing his line and he got hooked very frustrating um to see for from a driver's per perspective to have that kind of guy behind you cost you a win he's not even in the playoffs he's got two playoff guys in front of him and justin haley noah gregson i mean this could have had serious implications for these guys luckily it didn't but you know he took gregson out almost took haley out haley got knocked away knocked out of position and didn't lost his chance to win the race because of that. You know, that's just not the right move to make. I, I get that you've that it's desperation, but I don't care how desperate you are. You never 
you you just can't wreck people to to win races. I, I don't care. Um, I don't care if it's your last race in it with, with a truck. I don't care if it's your first race with a truck. You just don't do that. Um, like we talked about, Ben Rhodes, Stuart Friesen, they were both eliminated from playoff contention. Ben Rhodes, kind of a surprising story this year to me. I thought he was going to do better. He put up pretty much equal stats, had the, had the one win again, was kind of a contender, but not really a, seri- a serious threat to win week in and week out, and not a serious contender for the championship either. It was kind of surprising because you know he went out and won the K&N Series title in 2014. He made a couple more jumps, went up to ARCA, has worked his way up through the trucks the last couple of years. And this was supposed to be his breakout year. He's got sponsorship backing. He's, in, he's with Thor Sports, who's one of the best truck teams in uh, the series. He just, he just couldn't put it all together this year. Um, so he gets eliminated. He's sixth in the point standings now. It, it's tough to see, but at the same time, Ben Rhodes has got to pick up his act. He's got to figure out a way to really get that development going because, listen, Thor Sport doesn't have a truck series team uh, or Xfinity series or Cup series team. He's going to, I mean, he's got to make his, he, he's got to get himself noticed for these Xfinity teams to notice him. I mean, He's not, it's not like Thor Sports going to say, okay, it's time to call you up to the Xfinity team. No, he's going to have to get a, a ride from a separate organization, which makes it all that much tougher. But he's got to perform when he's in this top truck, truck equipment. I think next year is a make or break year for Ben Rhodes, and it'll be interesting to see. I think if he, if he doesn't compete for the Truck Series Championship next year, uh, I think if he goes out and has another year you know, equal to this one in 2017, and we're looking at Ben Rhodes maybe not ever, maybe losing his shot to make the Xfinity Series or make the Cup Series, similar to Matt Crafton. Uh, and Matt Crafton, obviously, his teammate there. Uh, another, another big story from this race, um, you know, he, he's on to the, he's on to the uh, final round here. He's, you know, right on the edge. So, uh, sitting sixth in point, points, he's way back. Matt Crafton is really faced a significant downfall in the last three years. You look after his um, six-win season back in 2015, he finished, he didn't win the championship that year, but he's got two championships. 2013, 2014, he won the title. 2015, he won six races. I mean, clearly, the number one guy in the, in the series. Since then, he has three wins, none this year. This year, he's only led 64 laps the entire season. And, you know, I think that this might be it for Matt Crafton. You know, I think this might be his final chance to make a, a big run. I don't think Thor Sport's going to be in any position to, to show him the door. But I think, you know, Matt Crafton's in a position. He's been doing this since 2000. I mean, this is 18, 19 years of running these trucks and running them very well. And if he does hang him up, you know, we talked about it last week. Is Elliot Sadler a Hall of Famer if he, re- well, when he retires after Homestead? I don't think so, but I do think Matt Crafton is because Matt Crafton is like the generation two of Ron Hornaday. We saw Ron Hornaday start out in the truck series. He was never, never a good talent in Cup, never got that big ride in Cup or Xfinity. But when he was in the trucks, he was always a winner, a multi- multiple-time champion. Matt Crafton, very similar. He's always run well in the trucks. Two championships. You know, he had that six-win season a couple of years ago. He has done it all. He's been in the sport for 20 years. I think Matt Crafton is very similar to Ron Hornaday and just how he's shaped the truck series and been that guy who, no, he might not ever make the big show, but he is that consistent force uh, in the truck series. So I think Matt Crafton... You know, it's looking like it's coming to the end for Matt Crafton, but I think that if he does retire, um, either whether it's this year or next year, I think he's 100% a Hall of Famer, and he needs to be. He really should be. So now moving on, uh, the Cup Series was at Talladega this weekend, and, you know, another really fun race. We never saw the big one in this one, which was kind of surprising to me. You know, always, uh, especially lately, the restrictor plate races have just gone completely wild. Um, as we take a look at the results here, Eric Almarola, cat's out of the bag, he won it. 
finally gets the win after the heartbreak last week at Dover and all the heartbreaks um, in this in the year for him so far. He finally gets it done. Uh, Clint Boyer, second place. Stenhouse, third. Stenhouse, an established restrictor plate racer at this point. Denny Hamlin with a real confidence-boosting fourth-place finish uh, as the Toyotas have been struggling. And Joey Logano with a good points day in fifth. You know, we've talked about Eric Almarola for weeks. I mean, last week we did a big part, on, uh, a big segment on him where, you know, we talked about how he could be become another uh, a future champion in this sport. I think he took that next step. I think he could be uh, gunning for it, you know, as soon as next year. As we take a look at the points now, Almarola is up to fifth. And you look at that, three of the top five and four of the top six, because Clint Boyer is in sixth place right now in the point standings. Those guys are all Stuart Haas racing. Kyle Busch and Joey Logano are the only drivers in the top six in the points right now that don't belong to Stuart Haas. I, I think that it's very possible that we see three of the four spots in the championship four go to Stuart Haas drivers, uh, depending on uh, how Eric Almarola, Clip Boyer does. I, but I think, you know, you look at Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Almarola, I think those are all guys that could really make a big push for the championship four this year. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's mo- mainly because Toyotas and Chevys are, are really f- starting to fall behind, which is kind of surprising to me. I never really thought that we would, uh, you would say that, well, A, Chevrolet, you look at um, how many years in a row they won from 2005 with Tony Stewart to, you know, 2000 and. 12 with or 2011 with Tony Stewart and then all the Jimmy Johnson titles in between they won all those championships in a row then Toyota started pumping money into their uh, into their program and they got really good Chevrolet is kind of backed out a little bit I never really thought that we would see both of them struggle so much this year especially lately um, at the beginning of the year sure Toyotas were great but you know look at you look at what Toyota was doing in the beginning of the summer. Five of the six races, they went out and won um, up to, leading up to Watkins Glen. But after Watkins Glen, they've only won one race. That's, that's, a August, that's since August. They have won one race with Kyle Busch at Richmond a couple weeks ago, obviously. Martin Truex hasn't been to victory lane since July at Kentucky. And Chevy's only won three times all year. And only once at a speedway last week at, at Dover with Chase Elliott. But before that, you got the Eric Almarola lucking out at Daytona and Chase Elliott winning the road course. But the speedway speed for Chevrolet just has not been there this year. And you can argue that Chase Elliott lucked out at Dover. He really did. I mean, it was a that, that race belonged to Stuart Haas before um, you know Almarola caused the wreck. Clint Boyer caused the caution. Kurt Busch was right behind Almarola before Boyer caused the caution. Harvick had all the issues. So that was, that was a Ford race. Um, do- Ford dominated the Dover race. And they almost, they almost won it again with Keselowski. If Keselowski wasn't caught up in that wreck, he probably would have won that thing. Um, but Chase Elliott, everybody crashed, so Chase Elliott had the win. And it, it came right to him. So it's interesting to see how far... Chevy and Toyota have fallen behind here, and especially Furniture Row as well. You know, Martin Truex Jr. and this team, they're so keen on, you know, keeping their performance up and staying consistent. Well, they haven't been consistent in the last three races. No top tens at all. They've, they, they've only had uh, four top tens since their last win at, at Kentucky back in, Ju- back in July. I mean, this team is not the same, especially since the announcement that they were closing their doors. I thought for sure that this would... That, that announcement would kind of boost Martin Truex Jr. to um, a championship. At the very least, some sort of hot streak where he went on and won a couple of races, but it, it, it's been the opposite. You know, they were in contention at, at the Roval, but they got taken out by Jimmy Johnson. Uh, other than that, the 78 car really has not been in contention to win races down the stretch. And you look at him, as we look at the battle, uh, battle for eighth here, Truex just... Is Truex is right on the line. Uh, the graphic won't show it, but you know Truex is that, or well, it will show it actually. Truex is that last guy um, in eighth right now. He's and remember that 18 points. That's that's all that's left of that giant cushion he got from winning four regular season races. You know he was 50 points um, ahead of everybody else coming into the playoffs. He has raced so poorly. 
in the playoffs, he's that, that cushion's down to 18. And look at the drivers below. You got Brad Keselowski, three wins this year. Ryan Blaney just won two weeks ago. Kyle Larson hasn't won this year because he's in an underperforming Chevy, but he's one of the best young stars of the sport. Blaney, don't forget, Blaney and Larson were one of them was going to win the last last Kansas race before they took each other out, and um, Kevin Harvick went on to win. So Martin Truex Jr., you know, he's got that 18-point cushion, but it's not really a cushion at this point because you've got Keselowski, Blaney, and Larson all right there. One of those guys wins at Kansas, and Truex doesn't, doesn't outperform the other, then Truex Jr. is not even going to make the, the uh, round of eight, which would be absolutely crazy. But Furniture Row's fallen apart, which has been kind of, kind of crazy. And with the whole Matt Benedetto news coming in, is... It makes me question, is an alliance with Joe Gibbs worth the same that it was two, three years ago? Because Joe Gibbs is not the team it was last year, clearly. They've had one competitive car all year. Eric Jones has, you know, had a few moments. He won at Daytona, obviously, but that was a wreck fest. Everybody that was competitive in that race got taken out. Matt Benedetto uh, finished well. I mean, you had two JTG Darty cars in the top five um, or in the top ten. At, at Daytona. That, that was a fluke race because, you know, everybody got taken out. But other than that, Kyle Busch is the only guy to have won this year for him. Daniel Suarez has shown a few flickers of, uh, of competitiveness. But other than that, he has just not been up front all year. He's, uh, and we'll get to Suarez a little bit more here in just a second. But he hasn't been there. Uh, you look at Denny Hamlin. This has been probably the worst year of Denny Hamlin's career. I mean, he's had a couple of chances to win races. He just hasn't been there. He used to be one of the best restrictor play drivers. You used to go to Daytona and Talladega and fear Denny Hamlin. Now he's not as much of a factor. Yeah, I get he got a top five, but everybody ran out of gas in front of him. I mean, Hamlin is not the driver he was a few years ago. He's definitely not a driver that can compete for a championship anymore. I I, I just, uh, and, and I think it, I think it's a testament to Joe Gibbs' equipment because, you know, they've they reached the top. They, they, got, they won the championship with Kyle Busch. Then they won with um, Martin Truex Jr. two years later. They, they reached the top, and now I feel like they're kind of getting lazy with their, with their work. And they've let Ford not only catch up to them, they've let Ford pass them. Stuart Haas Racing is... I think better than Joe Gibbs Racing was at the peak of their dominance two years ago. Um, you look at what they've been able to do. Qualifying last weekend was a huge telling point of that to me because they put all top they put all of their cars in the top four. One, two, three, four. How often do you see that? Never. Kevin Harvick dominated last week at Dover. Then he he fell off because of a uh, pit crew mistake. Then Eric Almarola took over. Almarola dominated, and he had Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer right behind him. Boyer had an issue. Almarola brought out the caution. Almarola wrecked. Kurt Busch fell back. But all four of those cars were running consistently in the top five all day long. And, you know, they go get the one two finish hit at Talladega as well. Almarola winning, Clint Boyer second. Stuart Haas Racing is already, they're not only going to win the championship this year. They're going to win the championship for years to come if they keep driving like this. I mean, you've got Harvick this year that uh, I think Harvick is the only guy on that on that roster this year that can that has the chance to go out and actually win the title because winning at winning the winning at Homestead just takes so much more. I mean, you have to be you have to have an absolutely flawless weekend. You have to make no mistakes. You have to have an experienced driver. It's so tough to win a championship now uh, because. You know, you got four guys that are preparing for months that that one car to, you know, run for a championship. One race decides it all. Uh, I don't. I don't think Clint Boyer has that. I don't think El Marola has that yet. I don't think Kurt Busch has that yet. Or well, Kurt Busch once once had it. I, don't, I think Kurt Busch is is over the hill um, in, in that category. And I think that he's not running. Uh, I think he's running great right now. But I, I I don't think that he's running at his best because that that relationship with Stuart Haas is not where it used to be. Um, you know, Bush is obviously on his way out. So that's going to be interesting to watch. But I think Stuart Haas 
is in line to win a championship. I Right now, unless something changes big time over the course of the, uh, of the last uh, five races here, we got Kansas, Texas, Martinsville, uh, Homestead. I mean, um, so there's not a whole lot of, uh, of wiggle room there. So I, I think Har- I, right now I think Harvick's the only guy that can go out and win that championship. I don't see anybody beating him. Uh, Truex has fallen off. Brad Keselowski's pretty much going to have to win at Kansas to stay in the playoffs. Kyle Busch, the, the, the results haven't been there. Toyota's just not been as fast as they were. Uh, the, Fords are, the Fords are really quick. I think Joey Logano might have a chance as well. Um, Logano's an, another story for another time, but I, I think he's starting to figure things out more and more uh, as well. As we stay with Stuart Haas Racing, you know, obviously we've talked about throughout the entire summer and into the fall, Kurt Busch not coming back next year to the 41. Um, unless a miracle happens, he's headed to the one car because Jamie McMurray, and the only official part of this is that Jamie McMurray is officially not back in the one car next year at Chip Ganassi Racing. Kurt Busch has been rumored to it all summer long, pretty much all year long. Gene Haas has said, you know, Chip Ganassi probably knows more about Kurt Busch's situation than we do. You know, that was a telling statement for me. I, I know for sure Bush won't be back. So, and with Stuart Haas's dominance and the way they have been able to just control everything the last few weeks and throughout the summer, throughout the season, and I think they're going to win the championship, that 41 seat now becomes the most valuable seat um, in NASCAR free agency because they're running top five with it with a guy in Kurt Busch who know, who doesn't want to be there. And you imagine putting a driver in with real talent that does want to be there. The possibilities are endless. We might be looking at another championship caliber car out of Stuart Haas Racing. Um, but here are the candidates. I think there's three guys who, who have a shot to get this ride. Um, Daniel Suarez is the first one. Obviously, we know what's going on with him. Um, at Joe Gibbs Racing, Martin Truex Jr. forcing him out. Truex will be in the, in the 19 car next year as Furniture Row uh, disbands because they ran out of money. Um, so Suarez forced out after two years, just two years after, after replacing Carl Edwards, who uh, retired suddenly. Suarez never really cracked up to what people thought he would be. Uh, he did so well in the trucks. He did so well in the Xfinity Series. He's an Xfinity Series champion. But he never showed up in the Cup Series. He's shown flashes of brilliance, but the finishes have not been there. He's been in top equipment. He just hasn't, hasn't been able to put the car in victory lane, hasn't really come close yet. Um, and the fact that Joe Gibbs Racing has kind of shown him the door so quickly, and the fact that he didn't get the 95 ride, I think, is telling as well. Because, you know, they're obviously a satellite of Joe Gibbs now. So that's going to be, that'll be, that, that was interesting when Suarez didn't get that over Matt and Benedetto. Um, but I think there's some major red flags with Suarez. But the one thing that he does bring to the table is sponsorship. You know, Aris has been there um, for his entire career, all the way up. And they were still bound to J- Joe, Gibbs ra- <coughs> Joe Gibbs Racing, excuse me. So, they're, they're going to still be sponsoring uh, most likely the 19 car in Martin Truex Jr. a little bit next year. But the rumors have, have said that they're going to you know, throw some extra money in and sponsor Suarez wherever he, wherever he you know, goes off to. And Peak Antifreeze also today uh, announcing they're, they, they've got to deal with uh, Stuart Haas Racing for 2019. So if Suarez does happen to go over there, Suarez and Peak have... have um, you know, been together in the past, so I think that we can see that as well. I think Suarez is, you know, a very likely option here because he brings sponsorship dollars with him and major sponsorship dollars. We see where that gets you. Look at where it got Eric Almarola. The only difference between Almarola and Suarez is that Almarola had sponsorship with a start with, with a backmarker team. Uh, Suarez has been up fr- with a quality team. One of the best teams in, in the sport for two years now, and he hasn't done much. So uh, I don't think that if you move him over to the 41, 
that he's going to do much better unless he really grows as a driver and it was in the first two years it's just been a fluke I don't think that he and I don't think that a whole lot changes I think you're looking at another 15th place run every week for Daniel Suarez the other guy Cole Custer um, he's been a mainstay in the Xfinity series the last couple of years but he only had that one win and you know that used to be a warning sign for me I never really thought that he would get that car this year until Daniel Hemrick signed with RCR to go to the Cup Series. Hemrick's never won a race in the Xfinity Series, but he got that Cup ride because he's been consistent. Cole Custer and Daniel Hemrick have very, very similar uh, Xfinity Series results. Um, So I I think it's very possible that Cole Custer gets this, not to mention his father is the vice president of Stuart Haas Racing and the CEO of Haas F1. So... You know, I think that he's probably the most likely option here uh, because at the end of the day, uh, if your dad's making the decisions, you've got a better chance than, than most to, to get the job. Um, if Stuart Haas does get a... Stuart Haas, they've got that one option out there that's, you know, the, the big guy, and that's Christopher Bell. And Bell would be the big ticket win for Stuart Haas if they can get him because we know what Bell's done. He's won the, he's won the Truck Series Championship. He's probably going to win the Xfinity Series Championship. He's got six wins in his rookie year there, most of anybody ever. Um, he raced Tony Stewart's sprint car this, year, this weekend and won in it at Eldora. I think that that's a bigger storyline than most people are seeing it as. Um, I think Tony Stewart's actively pushing towards Christopher Bell the only problem is that it's going to be so tough to get him away from Joe Gibbs. I, I, I don't see Joe Gibbs letting him go for any means. I think that you know he's eventually going to take over in the 11 car uh, within the next few years here. But if Stuart Haas could get Christopher Bell away, I think we're looking at, a, at the first rookie since Denny Hamlin, who's gone out and competed for a championship as a rookie. Because you put Christopher Bell in the best team, the best team in the Cup Series, and this kid's—I I think this kid's a once-in-a-generation talent. I think you put Christopher Bell and Tony Stewart um, together. I, I think that you have a a, a duo possi- that you know has the opportunity and potential to um, break at, to you know break the seven championship record. I think these guys could go out and get more than seven championships. That's how good I think they could be. Um, you know. Overall, what I ultimately think will happen with this ride, I think Cole Custer will probably end up getting it simply because Christopher Bell's not going to leave Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs knows what, he got, knows what he has there, and he'll do everything in his power to let it go. Now, if Bell stays with Joe Gibbs. He's got to be in the Xfinity Series next year. Ultimately, it's up to Bell. To Bell. Uh, we know he wants to be in the Cup Series, but we'll see what happens. So... That's going to be very interesting. I think that will be settled within the next couple of weeks, so that's why I wanted to touch on it today. Kansas is coming up um, on Sunday. That'll be a fun race, a cutoff race. There's so much that's going to go on. There's, you know, you've got the drivers in the elimination positions that really shouldn't be there. You've got Martin Truex Jr. holding on by a thread. It's going to be very close. I think we're going to see you know, one or two points kind of decide this. And that's going to make things really interesting. I don't think Martin Truex Jr. is going to make the next round of the playoffs. I, I think Kyle Larson or Ryan Blaney is going to come out and win this race and advance. Um, Larson's been too good at the tracks like Kansas. Uh, he dominated the Kansas race. He wants revenge. There would be no sweeter way to get revenge than to win at Kansas. He's my pick to win Kansas. I think he moves on and Truex misses the next round. Anyway, that's all we have tonight for you here on the Inside Groove. I am Nick Mumley. Thank you for tuning in on Northwest Access TV and Facebook Watch. We will see you again next week, once again at 7 o'clock. This has been the Inside Groove.